Trans history in general is very uh, little known. Not very much of it has been written. But in fact, transgender people have been around as long as there have been human beings. Uh, and it's important to recognize that history. My name is Aaron DeVore. I'm the Chair in Transgender Studies at the University of Victoria. I'm also the Founder and Academic Director of the Transgender Archives. Transgender Archives are the largest archives in the world that are focused specifically on transgender topics. Uh, we have material that goes back to the 19th century. Uh, we have material that comes from 23 countries on every continent except Antarctica and are in 18 different languages. Jamie Lee Hamilton uh, grew up in Vancouver's downtown east side. Uh, she herself comes uh, from a background where her dad was Irish and her mother was Chippewa Cree. Uh, she transitioned uh, as a teenager in 1970 and she was at that time the first youth in Canada to start a medical transition. In 1998, she was in the news again uh, because uh, women were, in fact, indigenous women and sex workers were disappearing from the downtown east side in Vancouver. If 67 murders were happening to any other community um, of women, that there would be, or men, there would be a public outcry. We eventually learned that uh, there was a predator, murderer, uh, preying on women in that area. At that time, they were, the police were not paying any attention to their disappearance. And Jamie Lee Hamilton uh, took 67 pairs of stilettos and dumped them on the steps of City Hall to draw attention to the fact that 67 women had gone missing and uh, the police were not looking into it. Jamie Lee Hamilton was an person with incredible resilience. She always bounced back and fought back and took uh, strength and energy from resisting the compounding oppressions that she dealt with as a trans woman who was also an indigenous person and a sex worker. Diana Marical is a two-spirit trans woman, a performance artist, a visual artist, and an author from the Six Nations area of Ontario. Uh, she was active in the 1990s to the 2010s. I grew to appreciate the body that I had. As male and strong as it may have been, inside, what I saw, what I felt, was woman. She was interested in educating the public about the fact that uh, traditional indigenous society uh, did not uh, divide gender up into simple binaries uh, as we typically do in those societies of Western and uh, European backgrounds. Often people who were gender diverse in traditional indigenous cultures were treated with uh, a great deal of respect and seemed to have uh, special uh, spirituality and insights that were of value to their community. Her performance pieces very much were trying to enact that kind of movement between genders or from one gender to another, but also the in-between spaces. And so that was part of what she was trying to get across to the public in the, the work that she did. Rupert Raj was one of the earliest uh, trans activists in Canada. He had a Polish father and a South Asian mother and identifies as a, a Eurasian person of color. He's from Toronto. He transitioned in 1971 and he started the first Canadian uh, organization on behalf of trans people in 1978. It was called the Foundation for the Advancement of Canadian Transsexuals. In the 1970s, there were absolutely no protections uh, for trans people of any sort in, in the law. It was extremely risky. 
to go public as a trans person at that time. As far as I've been able to determine, this is the first publication that was specifically for trans men anywhere in the world. The Metamorphosis and other similar publications as they started to come, come about uh, were available to people by subscription. You took a lot of risk if people knew that you were trans. And so a lot of people in uh, earlier decades uh, would be asking to have material like this mailed to them in a plain brown envelope with no return address on it. Some people went so far as to take out uh, post office boxes under aliases, under other names or just with no name attached to it at all, so that they could pick up their mail in a place where nobody that they knew would see what re they were receiving in the mail. It was only in 2016, 2017 that laws across the country started to be changed so that trans people were protected under human rights legislation. But long before that, uh, Kimberly Nixon was in, engaged in a court battle uh, that established this principle that trans people were, t were protected under human rights legislation under the category of sex. It's not a matter of choice to be a transgender person, and it's not a matter of choice to take it on. It's just, um, for me, it's a matter of survival again. And um, if this is allowed um, to continue, then it can happen in any workplace, and um, that's not okay. The courts had responded to the, the rights and said this was discrimination and they felt that within the letter of the law this discrimination was permitted. I'm just really afraid that when um, a transgender person calls Vancouver Rape Relief, which um, you know has been the case in the past, that they're turned away. The real change that we needed to see was legislative change. And that change came uh, across several years in different provinces and finally federally in 20. 17, and that was to write into the human rights codes of each of the provinces and the federal government and into the criminal code as well. So the human rights code wrote in protection on the basis of gender identity and gender expression and the criminal code said that activity against trans people could be construed as a hate crime and could be prosecuted as a hate crime. I feel gratitude for their willingness to take the risks and do the hard work that was involved in moving the needle a little bit further in the right direction. Uh, they took a lot of personal um, risks and it cost each of them uh, a lot of personal anguish to fight against the forces that they were fighting against. Uh, very much uphill battles, fighting and moving into the wind, uh, trying to uh, overcome uh, huge amounts of ignorance and prejudice. Each of them was only able to accomplish a small piece of it, but each of those small pieces uh, adds up and made it easier for the people who came after them.